Welcome to our first lecture, Chapter 1, The Ten Principles of Economics. So let's start with what is economics? Well, economics is the study of how people, entities, ergo people, uh, groups of people, allocate scarce resources. And the premise of economics in general is uh, a set of guidelines called the Ten Principles of Economics, and that's where we're starting in this course. These guidelines, these principles, are divided into three overarching uh, categories. So we're going to take care of the first category today and in this video. And it's how people make decisions. Uh, these are principles that guide how folks make decisions about allocating their scarce resources. But what is scarcity? It's something that you don't have enough of. Um, a lot of people think that money is the most scarce thing on the planet. Um, and certainly it is something that drives a lot of our decisions, but actually time is the most scarce thing, followed probably very closely by opportunity. Uh, money, I would argue, is less scarce than those two because I can make a million bucks. I can lose a million dollars, and then I can make a million bucks back. Uh, so I can recover that. Now, I won't be able to recover the next five minutes, so let's make this video worth something so you're watching something that actually adds value. Um, I can't make the most of my opportunities, uh, which is if you're taking an economics class right now, your opportunity is to learn and become more efficient um, and to become brighter and help yourself make wiser, more efficient decisions. So um, the first category of how people make decisions uh, encompasses four of our ten principles. And they are principle number one, people face trade-offs. Now, if you're watching this, that means you're spending time watching this video and giving up something else. You could be playing video games. Um, classic example for a college student is uh, you could be partying or you could be studying. The cost of studying is more of a social life. The cost of having a social life is studying your economics or writing your English paper or studying for chemistry, whatever it is. Um, now, society faces a trade-off as well. And this decision centers on deciding whether to allocate your, score, your, your uh, resources, your scarce resources, efficiently, which means you're getting the most out of every unit, or allocating them in a more equitable uh, sense. So efficiency versus equality is highlighted here. Again, efficiency is getting the most out of your resources. Um, if you're a tire manufacturer, that means getting the most bang for your buck with your tons of rubber and tons of steel. Um, as a student, it means getting the most out of your time. Uh, if you're studying something that you may never be able to really process, um, I'll use myself as an example. Um, I'm okay at economics, I'm okay at business. Um, you wouldn't want me launching a rocket. So I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of my time studying physics because I won't get a whole lot out of it. I won't be very efficient. I'm just not very good at it. Um, so efficiency is getting the most out of your scarce resources, so getting the most out of your time, getting the most out of your inputs, getting the most out of your money. Equality is uniformly distributing uh, resources across society. So these are societal level decisions. A lot of times uh, these decisions are carried out in the forms of uh, policy. Um, and then different entities tend to lean one way or the other. Um, if you tend to be more efficient, you're always focused on the bottom line and getting what you can and, and being very productive, which is very, very important that you're going to learn in this class about GDP and the importance of that on income and quality of life. Um, we definitely need efficiency in this country. Um, but there's also a place for equality. Um, distributing things uniformly across a society, a perfect example is your local emergency department or emergency room. Um, let's tell the story of two Jonathans. Um, Let's have Jonathan number one, boom, working on my back deck. Oh, I got a nail through my hand. Ow. Uh, I'm going to go to the ER. Okay, Jonathan number two, boom, working on my deck, nail through my hand. I'm going to go to the ER. We're sitting in the waiting room. Jonathan number one uh, is gainfully employed, has great medical coverage. Boom, he's going to get his hand fixed, sewed up, and taken care of. Jonathan number two, boom, is going to come in. And he's unemployed, no money, no, no means to pay the emergency department for care. Um, if this was a, an emergency department set up basically, basically focused on efficiency, only Jonathan number one would get treated. 
Jonathan number two can't pay, so the doctor would be better off spending their time on people who can pay. But, contrary to popular belief, as perpetuated in the media and politically, uh, Jonathan number two, boom, gets his hand fixed too. Uh, one of the first things that uh, medical doctors do is they, they take an ho- uh, oath to do no harm. They will treat you regardless of your ability to pay. Um, so you can get your hand fixed whether you have insurance or not. Certainly, that's not very efficient. Uh, hospitals will make more money um, if they just took care of the people who could pay, but uh, they're legally required, they're ethically required, morally required to fix both Jonathan's hands. Um, so that is a system that's predicated then on equality and distributing the same resources for the same injury, the same nurse care, the same... Um, uh, protective equipment, the same stitches, antibiotic shots, whatever it is, they're going to fix both of those people's hands regardless because that's how our medical system works. Um, now, be careful if you're building a deck. Don't put a, hand, a nail through your hand to test this theory. Trust me on it, okay? So medical care tends to lean equality, but they have to have some efficiency because guess what? The local power company is going to expect the medical facility to pay its power bill too. So there has to be a mix of both. It's just that when you're allocating all of your resources, the time of the emergency department nurse, uh, the time of the emergency department physician, you have to allocate those um, in that system based more on equality than you do efficiency. Yet, you have to have some efficiency to remain financially viable as a hospital. It's an interesting uh, thought experiment. So that's principle number one, people face trade-offs. Uh, partying versus studying, efficiency versus equality. Principle number two, the cost of what you get is what you give up. And that ties back to this first example of, hey, tonight I could study economics uh, and ace my test, or tonight I can go out for a party and I'll just wing it tomorrow and my average is going to suffer. This is called opportunity cost, and opportunity cost is what you give up. So if you spend three semester hours studying economics, that's three semester hours perhaps that you can't spend studying British literature. Or that's three credit hours you can't spend um, you know, studying physics. Um, or not taking a course at all. It could be spending time at school to further your skills. Uh, it could cost you, let's say, five hours a week, um, both for the hour for the class, the travel, Um, that you could be working. Let's say you could be making $10 an hour. Uh, There's literally an opportunity cost tied to that, and it's 50 bucks. Five hours, $10 an hour, 50 bucks. You could have been working uh, wherever. Uh, Instead, you're spending in the classroom. Now, statistics will tell you it's better off that you're in a classroom getting smarter and learning. So there's always an opportunity cost. Um, Principle number three, rational people think at the margin. So let's back it up. Rational. These are are folks that we assume most people are rational. They're making decisions at the margin. Margin means next. Um, Rational people systematically make the best decision for them. Uh, We all know people are not always rational. We see people making like sideways decisions all the time in this crazy world. But rational people, um, more times than not, are the majority of people. If I see a red-hot stove, I see an eye on a stove, and that that thing is just red-hot, all right? I don't say, you know what, the best thing for me right now is to put my hand on that and let it roast a little bit. That's not rational, all right? Rational people are constantly making good decisions. You would hope that they would say, hey, you know what, there's a liquor store I should go rob. That's not very rational. So people are making the very best decision to put themselves in the the, the, uh, best opportunity to maximize... Um, their own good. Now, they think at the margin. What is that? Well, when, I, when you hear margin, I want you to think next. And in fact, when you're studying economics, I want you to think of it as a foreign language. Um, how I intend on teaching this course is very much like it's a foreign language. There's a lot of stuff that you do every day that's economics that you just didn't know what to call it. Okay? So I'm going to teach you the language of economics through these videos. So when you hear margin, I want you to think that my next change my next decision, my next action. All right. If I'm sitting in a red light and I look over, it's like, hey, I should go rob that that uh, liquor store. Um, I'm not really thinking rationally at the margin. Okay. Um, 
I could argue too, then back to opportunity cost. Hey, t- tomorrow I have a big exam. You know, I should spend the night doing an all-nighter, um, just partying, just throwing down, and um, I'll wing it tomorrow. That's not rational. Okay, there's an opportunity cost there. So rational people think at the margin is principle number three. Principle number four, and our last wonder, one under um, how people make decisions, is my favorite. People respond to incentives, and I've highlighted incentives here that can be positive or negative. This might be principle number four in economics, but it is rule number one. I assure you, it's rule number one. Okay? People respond to incentives, positive and negative. If I told you right now, hey, down the street, one block, there's a suitcase full of cash. It's about $10 million. You can have it if you go right now. What does that inspire you to do? That's a positive incentive to get up off your tail, run down the street, and try to find that money. Okay? I can also have negative incentives. Tell you what, if you rob a store, you're going to go to prison for 10 years. That's a negative incentive. So people respond to incentives, especially if they're rational, thinking at the margin, and realize they have opportunity costs, which is the cost of what you get is what you give up, and realize you face trade-offs that can help you make better decisions.